Hey guys, good morning. So I decided to sort of expand on that basic light and contrast tutorial series that I have here on the channel. And I have here a series of head turnarounds. And they're just very basic kind of skull shapes. Um, this is sort of what I use when I'm designing heads. You may have seen me do that. Um, and I actually have a scan of just this. And I need to send that to my backers in case people want to use it as a template, but we're going to work on lighting these today. And I'm going to go with a color that is just completely not found in nature, and that way we're not worrying about doing accurate color, we're just worried about applying color. So I'm going to grab a nice, beautiful, brilliant blue. And we're going to continue our trend of lighting from the upper right. So I am going to put a base coat on each, treating it the way I would light a sphere to begin with. Because a skull is basically a sphere with sort of like a spade attached to it. Sort of. That's a very simple way of thinking about it, but it's sort of the way it's designed. And all our lighting is coming from the upper right. Fortunately, I did not do a good job mixing my color. And I ended up getting lighter tones as we go. That's okay. Let's absorb some of this pooled color. I am painting on Canton super cheap watercolor paper, waiting for some more decent quality paper to come in the mail from Dick Blick. These little demonstrations have just about run me out of my stock, so it's time to reorder and replenish. And you guys can see I'm really only leaving white sort of at the top of the head. I'm treating this like it is a somewhat shiny surface. Just for the purposes of demonstrating lighting. get all that excess paint because on cheap paper like this it just pools terribly all right so we've got our basic layer for all of these head turnarounds down I'm going to grab a paper towel and absorb some of this excess paint So, these heads have had, they're still a little damp because we're working on cheap paper, but they've had a bit of a chance to dry. So we're going to go in and grab a little bit more of the color. And we're going to continue working, going from left and then left again. And as this cheap paper cockles, it makes it a little bit harder to get the sort of tight lines we might want for a project like this. So I hope you guys just get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so 
this is going to end up being one of the darkest areas on this skull because it's the furthest away from the light. So this is like a ball that's kind of had a slice taken out of it. And we want to leave some of the reflection. When I was in grad school, I had to do this exercise except in charcoal. Water color would have been actually much quicker. This one's going to be interesting because there's a lot of cutout shapes in this. And it's facing towards the light. Actually, I bet if I'd pitched watercolor, he'd have let me. Because I don't think he really cared about which medium we did it in, so long as we could demonstrate the planes. Alright, so facing away from the light. This one's going to be a little trickier for me, because this is closer towards the light, not exactly facing it. I'll go ahead and fill it in. And then we can develop the other colors later. Okay. So th this one is just the mirror of that one. And the slice gets completely colored in. And the sphere gets sort of worked away from the light, if that makes sense. Another one that's going to be multi-step and a little bit tricky. We've got our sphere. And then we have all these other planes that are facing away from the light, including the person's face. It's one of those that's going to take a lot of working. And then finally the view completely facing away from the viewer. Okay, so we need to let stage two dry now. So these heads have had a chance to dry. It's time to go ahead and work on the next layer. So on this head, that slice would be the thing furthest away from the light. So I'm just going to pop some color there on this one. It would be that extending down we've got a sphere and then we've also got some other interesting planar shapes going on and here we have the back of the head which is curved Curving away from the light. And 
those shapes as well. And I'm going to blend that out with just a little bit of water. Try to squeegee some of that out. Okay. And then... We've got this face which is curving away from the light as well. This one is a little tricky because the watercolor has made me sort of lose what I'm doing. So I'm going to reestablish some of those forms. And if this is completely unfamiliar for you guys, I can do a walkthrough where I go through drawing all of these. And I see I completely obliterated those forms by accident. Uh, but I can do a video where I walk you through drawing all of these shapes for the skull and explain how they work and draw faces on them. If this is completely new to you, there's nothing wrong with that. Just need to hear back from you guys if that is the case. And then, finally, the one that is completely turned away. So we establish the sphere again and then the other planes and this one is kind of starting to look pretty plain but we're just going to leave it as is rather than further complicate things so some of this is unfortunately still a little damp and some of it is dry so I'm going to try, try always being the operative word here in the Casa de la Natto soup to make a little bit of progress. So this one's been basically taken care of. This one needs a darker, Darker circle. Having control problems today. These, no, these are going to be fun because there's still a lot left to do on them. And hopefully now we'll be able to start really seeing some of that. So I'm going to work around that slice because it's still closer to the audience, closer, rather closer to the light source than the back of the sphere. And then we got this thing here, and then this thing here, and hopefully this is all starting to come together for y'all. And then we gotta do this one up here. And then, I know we have a back of the head here, I just have to be able to see it. And my head, and then, and, ooh, doo, 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 doo. and then, that. Okay, and there would be, maybe, no, I'll leave that as is, and then, we have this one. So we've got the part of the sphere away from the light. And then this end should really be further over in that direction. And then this. 
and maybe blend that out a little bit. Okay, and now to let this dry. Going even darker, and I may have to start mixing some indigo in just to get it dark enough. We're going to hit those areas that are lowest down on the face and typically furthest away from the light. I mean, since this is kind of kipped upward, it would even catch some, so I could even leave it like that. And there's also a slight lip to that sphere. I need to do a lip there too. And the more I'm describing this, the more I'm like, I need to do a video where I just go through drawing the skull and explaining it. Or at least drawing like a basic constructive anatomy skull like this. Oh, got my hand in the paint. Awesome. Need to get this one as well. And I think just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm kind of tempted to leave this bottom lip as is. No, I'll, I'll get it and then I'll just switch over to using indigo for the last bit. And you can leave some rim lighting if you want to, but right now it's kind of just easier if we fill the whole area in like that and let those dry. Alright, so we still got a little bit of standing paint grab some of that and then I'm going to grab some indigo mix the two together because I want a darker color for I am not going to get the lip on this one I'm just not so there there and this one over here and to be really frank, um, not hitting the lip and not hitting. So all three of these parts get progressively darker, but I don't know that I can get the paint dark enough that we can see the difference. So just keep in mind that they wouldn't necessarily be lighter like this. They would be darker, but I'm leaving them lighter like this so that you guys can see them. So that they actually show up with enough contrast. Anyway, that is basic lighting, very basic lighting because it's one light source, basic lighting on a basic skull shape. In future tutorials, I will show you guys how to do this turnaround skull shape and I'll explain it to you guys. And in future tutorials, I'll do a few faces and we'll paint and light those. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was useful, informative, and inspiring for you guys. Um, I hope you guys will check out some of my other watercolor tutorials here on this channel and over at netosoup.blogspot.com in my watercolor basics series. If you like this tutorial, do make sure you let me know. I definitely could use the encouragement. And consider joining my merry band of art nerds over at Patreon at patreon.com slash netosoup. Their help, their support, and their encouragement helps me provide content like this free to the public. So have a great day, guys. I'll see you again really soon. Bye!